Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on our webinar about Cyber Start Canada. Um, my name is Diana Barbosa, and I am the senior advisor working with the Rogers Cybersecurity Catalyst uh, here with Cyber Start Canada. And uh, as you are making your way through the different resources available on Cyber Day, uh, you're learning about a lot of the different aspects of cybersecurity, whether it's cyber hygiene, cyber career, how to protect yourself, how to protect your privacy privacy, how to protect your systems. There's a lot of information out here and I'd encourage you to visit all the resources available to get a full view of the landscape. What I want to talk a little bit about is the misconception that exists about cybersecurity and the fact that it is very much when you're looking at a career that you are going to be sitting in front of a computer by yourself looking through tons of code all day every day. That could not be further from the truth. There are a lot of different roles that exist within cybersecurity that fall into a few different categories. And those categories, uh, if I could just get the next slide, is right here, uh, builders. So these are the ones where uh, jobs where you are actually creating something. So you are creating a product, you are creating the infrastructure behind the scenes, uh, you're creating brand new services associated with cybersecurity. Then there's the breakers. This one, a lot of people I know love this side of cybersecurity. Uh, this includes things like ethical hackers. So that means, uh, you know, the word ethical kind of puts you on the good guy side of things, where you are in there trying to find holes in different systems, but not to uh, break in and do something malicious, but to uh, find where those vulnerabilities are, warn people that they're there so that those can get fixed. Then there's the defenders. These ones are, we're very well versed, uh, most of us on these, which are the people who are out there keeping an eye out on uh, the cyberspace world. They're like the cyber uh, police looking at what's happening and trying to stop uh, malicious actors from accessing different information or from damaging um, information or systems. Then we get our group of leaders, uh, and these are the folks that are out there uh, that are looking at things like policy, they're creating some thought leadership, um, and are really leading cybersecurity from a higher strategic point of view. Then you get the influencers, and influencers is the category that I would put myself into. I'm considered a woman in tech, I'm considered a woman in cybersecurity, although I would not be able to read you a line of code if my life depended on it. However, I am uh, well-versed on cyber safety, I'm available, I'm well-versed on the information and programs that are available out there, the careers that are available, and I speak to those. I'm versed on the labor market, and I can speak to that, and and again, help to influence uh, the direction that people go and provide information. And then you get your researchers. These are the folks that work for things like universities, the government, and even private sectors in order to look at what is the impact of cybersecurity? How is cybersecurity impact our world today? And what are some of the issues that we may be facing that are future uh, focused? Uh, so definitely there's a lot of opportunity in here, uh, perhaps for yourself, you could see yourself leaning to wanting to do more than one of these things to another. Uh, and even as I speak, you might be saying, okay, great. Well, one, two, three of these sounds great, but I don't know anything about cybersecurity. How can I, especially if you're still a student, start increasing those skills? And that's why we're here today. So I'm going to pass it over to Catherine to talk about our program that can start teaching you some of those very valuable skills that are required on the workforce. Great. Thanks, Diana. And so my name is Catherine McCabe. I am the uh, project manager for CyberStar Canada with the Roger CyberSecure Catalyst at Toronto Metropolitan University. And we're here to tell you about CyberStar. And so what CyberStar Canada is, is the Catalyst new and free youth-focused learning experience that seeks to increase cyber knowledge and safety among high school students. And so on February 1st, just a few, a few weeks back, we expanded Canada's first offering of CyberStart game to students aged 13 to 18 in Alberta, British Columbia, and Ontario. And what CyberStart game is, is it's a resource that makes it easier for students and educators to discover if you like the field of cybersecurity. So when you register as a student or as an educator with CyberStart Canada, you get full access to CyberStart game. 
So it's full of challenges that test the persistence and research needed when facing authentic cybersecurity skills. It helps build up your technical skills, your creative thinking, um, more of your soft skills, uh, whether it's approached by beginners with a casual interest or those with a vested interest in cybersecurity, CyberCert offers scalable challenges that that can really engage and sharpen anyone's talents. So I like to share with folks that um, I do not come from a technical background. Diana doesn't act either, actually. So it's um, we always like to share that, that importance of like the leaders and the influencers, for example. So how I got interested in particular, like my background is in sport and recreation. I was, uh, I have a degree in kinesiology and physical education. So that's a separate area of STEM. But why is that relevant to, to what we're doing? And we talk about the importance of transferable skills and the opportunity to develop your, your soft skills. So your communication, collaboration, creative thinking, critical thinking, uh, perseverance, re resiliency, curiosity, tenacity. So it's the opportunity to get to experiment with that while also learning your technical skills. And so it's a lot of fun to be able to engage with this. So I consider myself as a, a beginner in this space um, who is able to play these challenges and learn more about cyber, which is absolutely fantastic. And so the way that the game works is that you become an agent for the virtual cyber protection agency and embark on stopping criminal gangs who are using their cyber skills to do damage online. And so you must use various defensive tactics to try and thwart these cyber criminals attempts. The rich narrative, the highly designed challenges and the user-centric progress system make it easy for anyone to work through the challenges at your own pace. And so if you wanna play every day, you wanna play during a club, during class, during the weekend at home, wherever, whenever, it works for you. And the immersive and gamified learning environment, it's designed to teach those complex security concepts in a way that promotes exploration and investigation over traditional learning methods. And there's a lot of great opportunities for it. For anyone who's been part of a capture the flag event, for example, very similar idea where you're trying to find the flag and trying to find the challenge. So let me tell you more about what the different technical skills are that you would be developing and how that's laid out in the game. And so there's four exciting bases for you to explore in CyberStart. There's your intern base, which is a great way to find out what CyberStart is all about. So you jump right into your first assignment and see what life is like at the Cyber Protection Agency as you have a go at 12 different hands-on security challenges ranging from easy to hard. So you notice on here that you can see some are beginner, some are intermediate, and some are advanced. The great thing, and this is what I love sharing with folks, is that you're learning without realizing that you're learning. So while it may say that the challenge is intermediate or more advanced, because you're playing through them and your knowledge is progressing as you progress in the game, they don't feel as hard as they may be. So it's a really great way to kind of try out those different, um, those different levels and get an experience for that. Then you have your headquarters base, and those challenges range across the different cybersecurity disciplines. So it's a lot of practical real-world techniques and skills that you develop as you're playing through those levels. And like I said, your knowledge advances with the, with the opportunities that you have to do these different challenges. So personally, I love starting with the headquarters base because it progresses a bit slower in regards to difficulty. And... Um, versus intern base where it can progress quite quickly because it's giving you a, a taste of all the different challenges you have there. So I consider headquarters a great place to start, but you can bounce around and jump into the different bases as well. Then you have your moon base where you learn how to program, but unlike other programming learning tools, here you learn how to write your own security tools and understand your limitations. So for example, building a your own password cracker helps you understand why and how passwords are weak. So that's pretty neat there. Um, and then into the forensic space, you step into the shoes of a police investigator dealing with actual memory images akin to real world investigations. So here you have to digitally decode and use your sleuthing skills to discover the cyber criminals digital trails. So it's really neat to be able to, to engage with these different technical concepts and different programming languages too. Like you get to play with Python which is pretty darn cool. Um, and then you get to do other things like what is our data de detection and scripting, hashing, code cracking, like so many different things to get to, to learn more about cyber. Now, as you're doing that, 
you have the opportunity to earn badges. Now you'll notice here it says educators badges, not to worry students, coming up next for you. Um, but the way that you can earn these badges is registering for the program, inviting other students to play, and then having them play at the challenges. And so as soon as you register as an educator, you get your Cyber Opportunity School Award because you're introducing students to this opportunity to become more digitally aware and cyber safe, which is absolutely fantastic. And that's what we want to be doing. Um, and then as you're referring more students and those students are completing challenges, you have the opportunity to earn your Cyber Education Champion badges. And there's the different stars for the number of students and the number of challenges that are completed, which is a lot of fun. And now for our students, because I know that you want to know about this opportunity too, you register for the CyberStar Canada program, and if you achieve 1,000 points, you get your first badge. Your second badge is for 25,000 points. I personally am at 22,800 points. I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm very close to being a digital detective. And again, non-technical, which means that this is possible for those who do not have that technical background or that experience with computer science or with cybersecurity. And then 50,000 points is your cyber conqueror. So working on that. We're getting there. So keep working on those challenges, keep capturing those flags, learn, have fun, and share your badges online. So you can put them on your resume, you can put them on LinkedIn, you can put them on your social media. Educators, students, share this with your networks. Let them know the cool things that you're doing and how you're progressing in the game and all the things that you're learning. It's a lot of fun. Now at times, there are some challenges that can be a little more difficult. And so within the platform, there is the field manual. And so the field manual has a lot of different engaging video tutorials and simple step-by-step -step guides that help students and educators learn unfamiliar concepts and provide support when stuck on a challenge. So if you ever get stuck, you can jump over to the field manual and learn from one of the experts how to solve a problem. Within the field manual, they also have a couple walkthroughs of different challenges within the intern base and in the headquarters base, which are really helpful. I personally found them really helpful. I learned a lot of different, um, different functions on like the keyboard that lead you to different things. Super helpful and things that you don't even realize. And they can become easier in your day-to-day -day life doing different things. Now, if you ever get... Um, if you get stuck, but you're not quite at a place where you want to spoil the challenge that you're working on, there's a hinting mechanism available. And so it can give you a little bit more information to help you push through that challenge and be able to solve it. Um, but you can also use, we always say Google is your best friend. You use Google, you can use, um, collaborate with your, your colleagues and your friends, like ask them for help on the challenges, work together to get um, through them, get your points, get the, the opportunity there and learn a lot. So those who have a go at the challenges in CyberStart will learn how they can become more cyber savvy themselves, which is critical in this digital era. We also want to build community with CyberStart Canada and building more connection uh, in the game and outside of the platform. And so there's opportunities to be able to do that, where you can join the CyberStart Canada community exclusive to purpose to participants of the CyberStar Canada program. And the opportunity to opt into the community is completely optional. It's located on your registration form if you visit cyberstartcanada.com. And you're able to connect with friends. Uh, you can meet people from different schools, from different cities, from different provinces even, um, and get help on the different challenges. And you can also hear about exclusive updates and events. Uh, with that, um, we want to again encourage you to go ahead and use the QR code or the website cyberstartcanada.com in order to register for the CyberStart program. Uh, start exploring, start earning your badges. Um, the one thing that I will sort of flag is that there is, as there always is, an email verification process. Uh, two things that help to speed that up is one is if you have access to a personal email is to use your personal email as sometimes school-based emails do filter out uh, outside resources. Uh, and two, if you do not get your uh, verification email that you check your spam or junk folders because sometimes they do sneak in there. If you've done all of that and you still don't have it, there is a contact us section and you can send an email uh, and we will get you 
started ASAP. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to listen to our presentation. I hope we have ignited an interest in exploring the field of cybersecurity. We hope to see you online earning badges and absolutely can't wait for you to join us on June 1st. Thank you.